Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Fanny Longo back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it to the friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So today, this is going to be another continuation of our Quran A Miracle of Miracles by Amid Didat. Uh, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. In other words, Allah expects them to see, to be able to see, to witness. أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَ تَرَتْكَنَ That the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. فَفَتَكْنَا هُمَا And he split them asunder. Who is he talking to? Who is he addressing? Kafir. Which Kafir? The Badwins of 1400 years ago? No, no, no. What can the poor man understand? Well, what did he know about the universe, about the creations of the heavens and the earth? What did he know? He only accepted whatever was said. If this was Allah's kalam, amanna saddakna. We hear and we accept. We believe. This was iman that they had. They didn't have a grasp. Allah is not addressing those unbelievers of the times of Muhammad, or the unbelievers in the Congo, or among the Eskimos who might not believe in God. No, 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 no. He is talking to the men of science, men of learning, who are now expounding to the world the theory of creation. That these astronomers with the mighty telescopes, when they're looking into space and they're analyzing the, the movements in the heavens, and they're telling you as if they did it, if they are the ones who are making these things, this machine, this clock to work, this clock of the universe, the way they explain it as if they are doing it. Such a person, with his great learning, he says that this universe came into being with a big bang billions of years ago. Because he's watching the universe and he's noticing that these heavenly bodies are receding from a central place somewhere, is all going out in all directions, moving away, away, away. Like a balloon. When you blow, it gets bigger and bigger. Something like that is happening in the skies, in the heavens. These galaxies, they're receding from us at a faster and faster speed. At a faster and faster speed. And once they reach the speed of s s light, 186,000 miles per second, once they reach that speed, we won't be able to see it anymore. Because the light that is coming from there, it won't be coming anymore, it's going away. So we must discover bigger and better telescopes to see the sights, the wonders. Otherwise, we'll miss the bus. So they say that this universe came into being with a big bang, the big bang theory. Who says that? The most learned men of science, astronomers. They say, hey, where did you get these funny ideas from, this fairy tale? about a big bang. So no, 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 it is not fairy tales. These are facts, demonstrable facts. We can demonstrate it, show you what is happening. And from that we can conclude, if we had a film and put in reverse gear, so we could see what is happening is all coming back again. With the way it's going out, the balloon, if we can deflate it, you'll see it all coming back to one central point. And there was a big bang. When did you discover this? He said, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. What is 50 years? Nothing. As an, an illiterate man in the desert, a person who didn't know how to read or write, a person who couldn't sign his own name, he could have, couldn't have known this, could he? He says, no, never. Impossible. Man doesn't know astronomy. He hasn't got the instruments. He hasn't got a telescope. Nothing. In the desert. And among an Ummi people, illiterate people. And he is now telling you, this man in the desert, 1,400 years ago, Kana Taratkan, Fafatakna Huma, and he split them asunder. And you biologists, people who study minute life, microplotism, the amoeba, he says, you know, life originated in the sea, water. Without this water, no life. And they tell you, he says, look, we look back in time, in space. He says, look, this is how life originated. There was a time when this earth was a molten mass. 
Nothing could have survived here. Yeah, everything boiling, boiling. And over a period of billions of years, you know, the vapors went up and came down, and the vapors went up and came down and started cooling this earth. It took a billions of years. And then started life, germs, plant life, and all these things started. At one time, there was nothing. And then it started. Where did life come from? He says, from the sea. Certain chemical actions, the sun playing its part, and life started from there. Mm -hmm. When did you find this out? It's yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. An illiterate man in the desert, he couldn't have known that, could he? He says, no, never. He says, well, listen. He says, and he has made from water every living thing. Say, will you then not believe? Who? You, men of science, you, men of learning, you kafir, you atheist, you agnostic, why can't you believe that this is not his handiwork? As Allah says, Awalam yakfihim, anna ansanla alaykal kitaba yutla alihim, inna fi thalika la rahmatun wa dhikra li kaumi yuminun. And these are signs. Blessings and a remembrance for a people who believe that he might have written this. In a verse preceding this, verse 48 of Surah An-Kabut, chapter 29, he says, He said, You were not in the habit, O Muhammad, you were not in the habit of reading as if out of a book. وَلَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ Nor were you able to transcribe it with your right hand. إِذَا الْلَرْطَابَ الْمُقْتِلُونَ In that case, these talkers of vanity, these babblers in the marketplaces, they might have had some reason to doubt. Muhammad was a learned man. He says, you see, he was in the certain university. And you know, now he's telling you these things, his theories. Yes, they might have some reason to doubt if he had been through that schooling, if the Arabs had some knowledge or understanding of science, learning, nothing. Allah shows you that he sends you an, an ummi prophet to an ummi people. Amazing. He chooses a nation steeped in ignorance, the whole of Arabia. There were no more than half a dozen people that could read or write. In the whole of Arabia, the nation is ummi to the core. And he chooses an ummi prophet. You know why? To prove to you that this is my work. This is I am doing. <laughs> Thomas Carlyle describes the people and what the Quran did to them. He says, a poor shepherd people, these Arabs, a poor shepherd people, roaming unnoticed in his desert since the creation of the world. From the time Allah Bari Ta'ala created, since then, roaming unnoticed. Nobody gives you a second look. Nobody gave the Arabs a second look. You know, say, well, there's some interesting people here. They've got beautiful women there. Nothing, nothing. They won't give you a second look. A liability to anybody who'll take you on. You're a liability. What are they going to do with this? People who married the stepmothers, who buried the daughters alive, fratricidal wars over little, little things, killing one another, cannibals. What do you do with them? Alexander the Great passed you by. The Persians passed you by. The Romans passed you by. Nobody interested in this hum human rubbish. He said, a poor shepherd people, Thomas Carlyle says this, a poor shepherd people, Roaming unnoticed in his desert in the creation of the world. See, the unnoticed becomes world notable. The small has grown world great. <laughs> within one century afterwards, within one century afterwards, Arabia is at Granada on this hand and at Delhi on that. Glancing in valor and splendor and the light of genius, Arabia shines over a great section of the world. He says, belief is great, life-giving. The history of a nation becomes fruitful, soul elevating, great, so soon as it believes. Is it not as if a spark had fallen? One spark on a world of what seemed black and noticeable sand. But lo, the sand proves explosive powder, blazes heaven high from Delhi to Granada.
what did it? This book of God. That shepherds and camel drivers, one of our cousins, a Jew, writing a book on medicine, he's having a dig at his Arab cousins. A Jew. He's writing about medicine, but he's having his own. He's having a dig at us. You know what he says? He says, goat herds and camel drivers sitting on the throne of... Like I said, sometimes the terminology of something does affect how something may be um, decoded or how a message may be taken. He, he goes on to give an example of where life begins. But then that just uh, made me think to myself because this, this is actually still a debate of where people believe. Where people believe that there is two ways in which we may have come to exist. Do people believe that uh, life actually started um, in the sea or do they believe that we, we, me and you, not just black people, uh, actually came from monkeys what do you guys think i'm just wondering and would love uh your take on that on what i've asked otherwise he was just making the same point he was making in the last i feel the last 30 minutes of this and yeah let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video Thank you.